After 11 years and billions of dollars, NASA's new rocket is finally ready, the SLS with a space launch system. It's the most powerful rocket, sure, but it's also projected to cost as much as a billion dollars per launch, maybe even more. Some people have some really good follow-up questions, like why did NASA need a new rocket? If we want to go to the moon, shouldn't we just build another Saturn V, the same one that worked in 1969? And why didn't NASA just use a SpaceX rocket for deep space missions, like the upcoming Starship rocket? It's a lot cheaper. So let's dig into the surprisingly political world of rocket design. FYI, I've just lost four separate temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. GC flank. Why GC? Lock the doors. Copy. In February 2003, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated during re-entry, and all seven crew members were killed, in addition to the loss of one-fourth of NASA's shuttle fleet and the very first space shuttle. The grieving families of those astronauts who perished agreed that America had to press on and keep sending people to space. But the investigation revealed another hard truth. The space shuttle needed to be replaced. The shuttle was supposed to make spaceflight cheap, routine, and safe, but it didn't live up to those promises. It wasn't cheap, costing about a billion dollars per launch. And while the shuttle was more routine than Apollo, it was way less than NASA had hoped, taking months to do maintenance between launches it probably ended up costing more to try and reuse the shuttle than just building a new one every time. But most importantly, the shuttle had a fatal design flaw that has proven to be really dangerous. The fact that the orbiter launches on the side of the external tank and the solid rocket boosters. Because of that design flaw, 14 astronauts and two shuttles were lost during a mission. That's a failure rate of about one in every 100 flights. Not good. But if the orbiter had been on top of the rocket stack, the Challenger and the Columbia crews would have survived. So as incredible of a vehicle as the space shuttle was, it needed to go, and was set to be retired after it finished building the International Space Station. Gentlemen, the President of the United States. Today I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. In 2005, President Bush announced the Constellation program that would build a new rocket system that would go to the moon and to Mars. NASA estimated that the demands asked of them for Constellation would cost $230 billion to fund it through 2025. As if that wasn't bad enough, just four years later, the program was already over budget and behind schedule. So today I'd like to talk about the next chapter in this story. We will work with a growing array of private companies competing to make getting to space easier and more affordable. In 2010, President Obama decided that this new launch vehicle was the wrong direction for NASA, given the costs and the delays. Instead, Obama proposed that the private sector, companies like SpaceX and Boeing, should lead the charge on America's return to space, and that NASA should just hire those companies to fly astronauts and cargo to space at a fraction of the cost of a NASA-made rocket. Obama's proposal was met with fury. The national rocket programs, they support thousands of jobs. And of course, there's a national pride in having a rocket built by the US government. The result of all this political fighting was to try and do both in some sense. NASA would invest some money into the private sector. And in 2011, NASA was also directed to develop a cheaper crewed rocket. That new program became SLS, or the Space Launch System, and it salvaged as much as it could from the designs and research already done by Constellation, plus anything that could be reused from the space shuttle design. 11 years later, an SLS is finally ready to launch. Although the 21 billion spent on SLS is only a fraction of the Constellation's original price tag, it's not cheap. For the first four launches of SLS, it will probably cost about a billion dollars per launch. Okay, so why? Why after all that is SLS so expensive? Well, flip through your history book and this has happened with every space program. Why do these rocket redesigns cost so much money? Well, honestly, the hard truth is that a nationally funded rocket program is going to be expensive by design. It's a feature, not a bug, as the techies say. See, SLS supports 80,000 jobs spread across every U.S. state. They're manufactured by hundreds of some of the most important contractors to the U.S. military. There are six privately owned factories working on SLS within an hour drive from my house alone. It's a nationwide effort. This is how NASA gets Congress to agree to fund space exploration. 
If you fund our programs, we'll provide jobs to your constituents in your state. And in the meantime, everyone will benefit from all the emerging technologies that your contractors are going to develop along the way. So instead of giving money to one company in a few states like SpaceX, you spread the money to hundreds of companies in every state. So which is better for the whole country? Reasonable minds disagree. Let's talk about something positive from all that mess. We're getting a really impressive rocket system. Look, if Congress is going to require NASA to build an expensive new rocket, well, SLS is certainly the kind of rocket you might want to build. Think about how you might upgrade the space shuttle design. First, you'd move the crew and the cargo to the top of the rocket stack so they could easily get away if there's an explosion. You would keep that incredibly efficient rocket engine designed for the space shuttle and the super powerful rocket boosters. You'd want the vertical staging and the capsule from the Saturn V so that you'd go to the moon or Mars or even further. And that's what we're getting with SLS. The result of all that money is the most powerful rocket that has ever been built. SLS is able to send 80,000 pounds to Mars in a single Block 1B configuration, more than the combined weight of the first two pieces of the International Space Station from one launch. It could be used to build a new space station, to travel to the moon, to Mars, to launch massive new telescopes into deep space that dwarf anything we have today. And it's flexible in a way that the Saturn V, a rocket designed for only one type of mission, just never was. But barring some breakthrough rocket technology like light speed, the SLS will probably be the last crewed rocket that NASA ever designs. In 2010, private crewed space companies were really only a dream that Obama wanted to fund. They didn't exist yet. Well, that's changed in the last decade. Today, there are several American companies that could get you to space much more cheaply than SLS. None more so, of course, than SpaceX. SpaceX is the primary way that NASA gets astronauts to the space station right now, and NASA pays SpaceX just one third the cost per astronaut as they did with the space shuttle. It's a really good deal. Since the radical 2011 budget, NASA did indeed adopt the commercial partner program and has been funding companies like SpaceX, Boeing, Rocket Lab, Blue Origin. It's proven to be a really successful and sustainable plan, even as Congress has been frustrated by it. SpaceX is well on their way to have their own super heavy lift rocket called Starship that's also designed to get people and cargo into deep space, but at a fraction of the cost. If they can deliver on that rocket design, it's going to change space travel. NASA wants reliable, cheap ways to send people and things to space. Think about it. If NASA could take the money that they currently have to spend on building this rocket and instead spend it on space stations and science missions, well, they'd obviously prefer to do that. But as of now, NASA has been ordered by Congress to diversify, to have multiple rocket systems available, one of its own with SLS, and several more through private companies like SpaceX. Actually, on that note, the lunar lander for the Artemis moon program, it's not designed by NASA. It's been awarded to SpaceX for their Starship lander. And I suspect that SLS is gonna end up being America's last crewed rocket program, and that the private companies are gonna take it from there at which point NASA will get to focus less on how to get to space and more on what they do when they get there. This episode has probably seemed like a lot for most of you, but if you want to deep dive into more of the history, the politics, and the strategy with all of this, I have some great video recommendations for you to check out. I'll put those links in the description. In the meantime, if you have a chance to see SLS launch one day, do it. It might be your only chance to see a rocket developed by the entire United States. And while that's expensive, there is something special about that too. The Space Launch System will take America's greatest rocket hits from the last six decades and combine them into an insanely powerful and well-engineered rocket. A rocket that will hopefully take us to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Let's use the contact for the test one.